So, I've been really late to the Animal Crossing um, bandwagon for a few reasons. Um, when it first came out, I was considered an essential worker, so I was working a lot and going to school, so I didn't really have a lot of time and I was feeling extremely anxious during that whole time. Um, and I would just come home and kind of sleep. <laughs> And then, secondly, I couldn't find a Switch up until, um, August? Yeah, I couldn't find a Switch till August. And then, when I got the Switch, I ended up playing, like, the entirety of Paper Mario and becoming really obsessed with that. And then I got Animal Crossing, and I'm really obsessed with that now, so... So one of the things about Paper Mario and Animal Crossing is that you can listen to a lot of audiobooks while you're playing those games because first off the characters don't actually speak they speak gibberish and secondly it just they're like kind of mario sometimes you can get yourself in trouble if you're not paying attention to what it tells you to do but animal crossing you're just you're chilling you're just living your island life so i had never really played animal crossing before i was aware of it i used to work in a game store when i was in high school i worked at gamestop for like two and a half three years and i had seen the ds and the wii version of animal crossing come out and i did have a wii and i actually was semi interested in the wii version but i i think i just never really got around to it. I think it was just because it never really came back used and I used to get all of my games used because they were substantially cheaper. But guess what? I have Animal Crossing now and I have been listening to a ton of audiobooks. So I thought to myself, why not talk about the audiobooks that I have listened to while playing Animal Crossing and tell you about how I'm doing in Animal Crossing because I'm at a point in the game where Things are getting really exciting. This explanation is for anyone who hasn't played Animal Crossing, but basically in the beginning of the game, you are being swindled by Tom Nook the Crook, as I so lovingly refer to him, where he basically charges you for everything, even though he's the one that wants you to do it and you have no choice in the matter, but somehow you're paying him and you're in a lot of debt to him all the time. Um, and even if you want to move a house or a shop that is technically him and his son's shops, Timmy and Tommy, um, you're still paying 50,000 bells to move it, even though it's not your property. So it's pretty much like real life, but somehow more relaxing. But um, you get onto the island and when you're first on the island, you're not really able to do a lot of stuff like you're just trying to build up to this point in the game where you can now like build up your island all i know is i'm pretty much behind on everything so now i'm finally as of like last week at a point where i can be an island designer <laughs> Which basically means that I can start like building my island to look how I want it and do themes. But yeah, I wanted to do this because I talk about Animal Crossing in some of my vlogs and I've talked about it on my Instagram and people like message me and add me as friends sometimes. So I kind of wanted to show you guys my island and like my progress. It is a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. And there were ideas that I had that I started and then I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. So they're still there because I'm trying to fix other things. I don't know, I thought it would be fun to show you my progress on Animal Crossing and also tell you books that I've listened to on audiobook while I'm playing Animal Crossing. So the first book that I ever started listening to while playing Animal Crossing was Sia Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything, which I ended up giving 3.5 but rounded it up to four stars. This is a genre bending story about our main character Sia Martinez. Her mother was first deported and then while she was trying to come back to the states she was found dead in the desert and not long after her grandmother passed away. So this is a story about racism, immigration, it's about family, there is a love story in it, and it's overall a really beautiful story with a lot of Mexican folklore. And I completely loved that aspect. I really loved the discussions that were happening in this book, but because it is a genre bending book and there's a heavy 
emphasis on the romance this book just didn't work for me in that regard I do actually have a vlog it's my tome topple part 2 vlog where I talk in depth about more of the issues that I had with this book but overall it's a really good book for people who like contemporary and especially contemporary that has a heavier focus on romance and some genre bending elements to it the second book that I read while playing Animal Crossing was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I also discussed this book in a vlog. It's called Bibliophile Bites, where I take a bite out of romance because I don't really read romance. But Get a Life, Chloe Brown is about Chloe Brown, and she suffers from fibromyalgia, so she has chronic pain and some issues that sort of make her feel as if she can't live life to its fullest potential because she's kind of scared of living life and one day she has a near-death experience and it makes her want to get a life. So she makes a bucket list of things that she wants to accomplish. The first thing she wants to accomplish is moving out of her family's home and living in her own apartment. So she does that and at her new apartment she meets the apartment manager named Red. He is going through his own kind of identity crisis. He is an artist but his career has kind of tanked because of his mental health and him and Chloe kind of make a deal and he helps her tick off things on her bucket list and it kind of turns into something else and it's um it's an enemies to lovers type romance and I gave this like a five out of five stars I really really loved this I don't usually read romance and in that vlog bibliophile bites where I read romance books you'll see that I for the most part enjoyed the two books that I read but I didn't love them and I wasn't like completely rooting for the romance but in this book I would have been devastated if they didn't get together. I really loved their banter and their chemistry and it was just really funny. I think I like main female characters that are really witty and sarcastic and kind of um a little bit tough around the edges because I don't know Chloe just really won my heart so this was a very very enjoyable read and I will say because I know this matters for some people there are a lot of steamy sex scenes in this book so if you are somebody who doesn't really enjoy sex scenes um, this probably won't be for you for that purpose. The third book that I listened to was The Woman in Cabin 10 and I gave this two out of five stars. I did not enjoy this very much. So this is also part of a vlog. It is another Bibliophile Bites where I read thrillers and this one just didn't work for me. So you're following our main character Lo and she's a journalist and her up and coming assignment is to report on these high-end cruises that are starting to become a really fancy mode of travel for richer folks and this particular cruise is like a smaller boutique type cruise so she's gearing up to go on this cruise that I think is like a couple weeks but right before she ends up going on the cruise she is faced with a home invasion she comes face to face with the person robbing her home and so she's really shook up by this whole situation but still chooses to go on the cruise she borrows mascara from a woman in cabin 10 she has like a weird interaction with her and later that night she thinks she sees the woman from cabin 10 being murdered and thrown overboard when she goes to report it she's told that the woman in cabin 10 doesn't exist that there has never been anybody occupying cabin 10 and then things unfold from there there was a few things that didn't work for me um and it could have been the audiobook but i didn't really connect to the main character and i didn't really remember any of the characters to be real I had to just look up the main character's name right now because I didn't remember it when I was reading it. I didn't remember when I was talking about it in two separate videos and I just had to look it up right now. So there's that. I also couldn't remember who was who in the book. So whenever we were introduced to just another white dude, I was like, huh? Who's this? He's new. And then it would be like, when I talked to him two days ago and I was like, oh. So we know this, we know him. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also didn't really like the twist or the ending and it made me question if I just wasn't retaining this book because I was so bored or if it was 
because it was meant to throw you off. I don't know. I don't want to deter anybody from reading this book, but I've heard other books by Ruth Ware are much better, and I am willing to give Ruth Ware another chance, but this one just was not it for me. And in that same vlog, I also read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, and um, I liked this one. I gave it a four stars. So you're following our main character, Jules, who is really down on her luck. She has lost her job, lost her boyfriend, and her boyfriend was cheating on her in their own home and she walks in on it talk about worst fucking nightmare you know what i'm saying and she doesn't really have anybody in her life her parents died when she was a little bit younger and her sister went missing uh, around the same time that her parents died and so she doesn't have anybody except for her best friend chloe and she doesn't want to be a burden to chloe so there is an opportunity to be a house sitter at this like prestigious hotel slash condominium place it's a historical building that has kind of like a shaky past but it's known to hold some of the most famous and influential people there and she's kind of always dreamed of living in this um, apartment complex I'm gonna call it an apartment complex because of a book that she grew up reading with her sister and there is an opportunity to house sit one of the apartments because they don't like to leave them unoccupied and in this opportunity comes like twelve thousand dollars or something like that so she takes the opportunity obviously because it's her dream plus money and she meets a few other house sitters but one of them goes missing and because of her past she gets kind of obsessed with figuring out what's going on because everybody seems to just be like no she just left it's no biggie it happens all the time and she's like no i really liked this book i think because i read it so soon after woman and cabin 10 it was like a nice change because it was more fast paced and i was more invested in the, the main character but um i think what really hooked me was the ending and like the the last quarter of the book was really interesting and even if you could call who you think was involved in this like weird mystery that's happening it's bigger than you think and it's like more sinister i don't think i'll ever read the other two like the first two that riley sager um published i have no interest in those two but the is it home before dark i'm really interested in that one is it called home before dark the next book that i listened to was the only good indians which i absolutely loved and i highly highly recommend listening to it on audiobook because it was just like a completely different experience um i gave this a 4.5 but i rounded it up to a five stars so one thing i do want to say before i tell you what this book is about and how i felt about it i think it's really important that you read own voices reviews for this book so any indigenous reviewer please read their reviews and disclaimers before going into this book. I think it's really important and I think it's especially important even if you've already read this book and you're wanting to review it to read own voices reviews. The Only Good Indians follows four Blackfeet Nation men who have done something in their past that has come back to haunt them and put them at a struggle for their lives. This book is full of social commentary about reservation life, traditions, the racism against ind indigenous peoples, and I really thought that the horror elements were spooky but I really enjoyed reading about the cultural elements and I think if you aren't somebody who reads author's notes that it is a good idea in this case to read the author's note because I thought it was a really wonderful author's note I don't know it just um I don't always read author's notes to be honest because sometimes I just don't care the next audiobook I listened to was when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole who is traditionally a romance writer now dabbling in thriller and I think she did a really wonderful job for this being her first thriller book and I can't wait to see what else she has to come out with I um gave this a four out of five stars i think in reality it's a 3.5 i rounded up to a four because i liked 80 85 percent of this book a lot like i was really invested i read it in 
about a day. So When No One Is Watching follows Sydney and Theo. Sydney is a black woman who grew up in Brooklyn and has kind of slowly been watching gentrification happen. And Theo is a white man who is coming into a neighborhood that is part of the problem of gentrification. So Sydney and Theo end up kind of partnering together because Sydney wants to create a sort of historical walk because Sydney wants to showcase that this neighborhood that she has grown up in has historically been black and there have been a lot of influential and very powerful black figures that have lived in this neighborhood. Theo ends up partnering with her because he has a lot more time on his hands so they are doing a lot of research about the city and about these neighborhoods and they kind of come across more sinister and dark things that have happened in the past that seem to be cropping up again and in the end some shit unfolds. I mean the majority of this book does not feel like a thriller um, but I think that's the point. There are small little things that make you feel very uncomfortable, but the majority of the book is really talking about gentrification. There are a lot of encounters of racism within the book. So there was some aspects at the end where it was hard to suspend your disbelief, but I think the concept that Alyssa Cole was going with is something that I love, and I'm really excited for Alyssa Cole to continue in the thriller genre. This book does feel a little bit open-ended, like it could be more than one book, so that'll be interesting. I've never read or seen many thrillers that aren't like crime based, like what are those detective novels that turn into a series, but this would be interesting. The next book that I listened to on audiobook was Grown by Tiffany Jackson. I really, really liked this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I want to read everything by Tiffany Jackson now. So Grown follows our main character, Enchanted, and Enchanted is an incredible singer. She's kind of trying to make it in the music industry. Her parents are kind of against this idea of her being in the music industry and it really doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they don't believe in her talents. It's more that their life isn't really cut out for her to be able to put the time and energy into a music career at this moment, but she has the opportunity to go and sing at a talent contest and one of the judges, Corey, who is a big time R&B singer that she admires and many people love, is interested in her and wants to take her under his wing and then things start to get a little bit dark and weird and I don't want to go too into detail because I actually went into this book not knowing much about what this book was about and it was way darker than I thought it was going to be but it was incredible. Like the topics that were covered, some of the lines in that book, like I was crying, I was fearing for my life. I highly recommend that and I highly recommend it on audiobook because I really liked the narrator. And then um, I haven't completed these ones quite yet. I'm close to being halfway through both of them. So I am currently listening to King of Scars by Lee Bardugo and I am bored out of my mind with that one. And then I am listening to the Invisible Life of Adi LaRue, which I'm really enjoying. It is so much different than anything V. Schwab has ever written, in my opinion. I have read everything of hers except for her much earlier works, like the Archived and I Didn't Read The Near Witch. But I've read everything else by V. Schwab, and um, this is just kind of what I was looking for right now. But King of Scars, yeah, I'm like, so those are all the audiobooks that I've read so far. So now I'll show you my island and like kind of talk you through what is up with my messy island. Hello and welcome to Ghost Bay. This is my island that has pumpkins everywhere. Um, so basically I'm just going to talk you through a little bit of it and then let the music roll. But I wanted to point out that areas like this are kind of visions that I had that I'm kind of putting on the back burner because like the Sable Sisters and Nook's Cranny and a bunch of my residents need to move to a different area for me to like finish a lot of things that I have in mind. So you'll see that there's random residential areas like I'm walking through right now that are actually going to move to an upper level. Then I'll figure out what I want to do like on the lower levels with more fun like parks and stuff like that. But at this point in time, 
things are a bit chaotic because I don't time travel so I can only move one residence per day and like build or destroy one incline or bridge or whatever per day so it's just a slow process and um, I'm going pumpkin crazy so I'm a little bit focused on pumpkins right now <laughs> so I hope you enjoy my island it's a bit messy but I love it Okay, so this is my house and I want to give you a tour of my house, but I first want to say that the room we're about to go in is my junk room or my trash room and this is where I put everything that does not fit in my pockets. Yes, I could easily put it in storage. Have I done that? Nope. Also, I think it's very hilarious that the turtle just chills on your floor. <laughs> so that's my junk room. <laughs> 